I, I probably should have done this earlier. Um, this video, uh, a lot of prepper and uh, type channels and farmstead channels and stuff like that that I uh, that I watch. Uh, this house, um, kind of a sad story. It was built in the 60, early early 60s. Um, some family from New York built it. Uh, it's a nice piece of property. At the time, this was way out in the boonies. There's a train station about I don't know two miles away. Um, now that you see other houses, it's built up a little bit. But it looks like a pretty normal house. It's got new siding on it. It's got an okay layout. I think it was uh, three bedrooms, two baths, big central fireplace. It was, it was nice. Uh, whoever built it put a lot of money into it. There's a lot of nice woodwork. Um, but there was a reason why this house was built. and. I think around Halloween I did, uh, I think I said something, you know, the woman that, the last person in this house was a uh, elderly woman who died, um, didn't have many brothers or sisters, any family, uh, she left everything to the bank, I think it was Wells Fargo Bank of all things, but, um, you know, along with the millions of dollars, but here's, here's the first interesting thing, you got this block wall that's poured concrete, inside of the blocks. The house is built, I uh, showed it a little bit. The house is uh, built into the ground. It's a ranch. But even on the front, I really don't want to take too much time on this. But on the front, you see the stonework. Uh, that goes all the way up to the, the window that's about three feet off the floor. Um, it's pretty protective. Um, but anyway, you get into here, got a pretty heavy construction for this time period um, when this was built. Um, that wall's poured solid inside of the block. And you can't really see it's a solid wood door with a sheet of metal on it on the outside. Uh, that's the primary electric coming into the house. Uh, it did have some big heavy wooden garage doors that had rotted and fall, fallen apart. But um, this house was built and put together as a uh, bug out location. And I'll, and I'll show you why. The big fear was nuclear war. Brought a flashlight. This is the back entrance. And this has been worked on. It's been replaced as plywood but radiation falls straight down. So you had this, this was cantilevered over the sides so that air could, whatever fell on it, any, any radioactive particles would land on the roof, you know, the, the, the decking of it, but then the air could circulate under the walls, between the walls and the joists come in here. You could open the door if it was real windy, you close the door and that way any radioactive particles get caught in the water on the bottom and you have no radiation in the basement here. Uh, another thing is, uh, I, I was ripping it down and that's what made me think of it. There's a huge amount of electric service for a house in like 1960. Um, those are three 50 amp three phase switches or 50 amp three, yeah, three phase switches. Um, it's a very big breaker box for a house. Um, there was another one over there that's already gone. Uh, a lot of cables running through it. All along here were these fluorescent lights that at the time you'd put the grow bulbs in. Over here, I had to rip them down to run some wires. This whole area was uh, had grow lights. In here, is where the well is. The well is in the basement, uh, right there. And the idea is that if uh, something goes wrong, it's, it's a very high water table here. It was a well-picked lot for for what they're looking for. Um, that comes out, but the water, you've got your fresh palatable water from the well right there. Um, 
The house was very insulated for a house of its age. Um, but yeah, uh, kind of sad side note for uh, prepping. And if you watch some of the old 60s TV shows, you know, the old movies, you know, The Last Day and, you know, stuff like that. You know, somebody in the neighborhood builds a bomb shelter and everybody knows and kind of giggles about it. And then all of a sudden the Russians launch. And then it's a big problem because everybody wants to come into the bomb shelter. And the guy who built it says, no, this is for my family. You could have built yours. Go to hell. Sorry, you're all going to die. It's been nice knowing you. And uh, this, these people apparently had that mindset. Because although she was part of the... She was involved in the United States equestrian team. She liked horses. Um, she did things outside the house. From the people that knew her, she was not social at all. She would go do the thing that she wanted to do, and she would come back and did not associate with anybody, uh, which is probably why she was the last one in the family, and when she died, everything was just, you know, left. Um, but that was the mindset back then. You know, we're doing this. You could, too, or you could buy a new Lincoln, or you could buy a vacation, or you could whatever. We're doing this instead. Well, this is what they did. And the last one in the family died here and was uh, found half-eaten by rats um, with a dead horse in the backyard because the horse starved. Uh, but the, uh, you know, the prepared life is a lonely life. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Um, but anyway, when people talk about the bug out location and, and what they're going to do, I'm sure someplace it was a big damn generator. Uh to run all that power. Um, I don't know if there's any buried tanks outside. I know the uh, original fuel tank was outside with some huge, you know, thousand something gallon uh, oil tank. Uh, that was, that's been ripped out. I'm sure there's probably another one for a generator someplace. But this, uh, you know, cinder block walls uh, poured concrete, everything is poured solid, uh, back wall is solid concrete, um, this side of the house is east, east, this is southeast, facing southeast right here, that would be east, that side is buried, uh, dirt right, right up to the bottom of the windows, um, I mean, it was, it was, it was designed to, when it's about 35 miles from New York and uh, New York gets hit, hopefully everybody would be here and they would have their seeds and they would have their food stocks and they would have their grow tables in the back and they got their little barn and they had a couple of horses so they have transportation and uh, found some parts for a uh, you know, 1960s Volkswagen Bug. They were pretty much the, uh, the indestructible car back in the day. So that's what this place was. And, um, you know, it's just something to think about when people are planning their the end of the world retreat. You know, that's how they got fresh air when the whole family's living down there. Back there is where the air was, or that's where the water was. You know, whether you have electricity for a well or not, everything's indoors. You don't have to leave. Uh, I don't know where the generator was. Um, but there's some service going out to the back. So I'm guessing there was, I know some wreckage of a shed or something off the corner. So I'm guessing the shed was, with the generator was, you know, right over there, someplace between the back of the house and the barn. Um, but it's a real overbuilt house for its, for its time it was really overbuilt. And, uh, and I've worked on other houses you know, some of them were built by the, I worked for the original owners that built them and they explained them to me. When I came in this house, um, you know, I immediately picked up on, on what this place was. But, uh, yeah, kind of a sad story. You know, the people that weren't going to bring anybody in ended up all dying off and the last one died alone um, with no friends. But, stuff to think about. A little bit of oddball history here in Bedminster, New Jersey. Y'all have a good day.